Right, I thought I'd, I'd better explain what I'm going to do. This is actually the, the end of the battle. Um, but I'll explain what I'm trying to do. I'm going to be using the Pickett's Charge rules. Um, I'm not an expert at this by any means. And the, uh, the purpose of this video um, is much more a case of me putting it up there and then finding out what, what I've done wrong with the rules. Um, I'm playing solo. So it tends to make it a bit easier in that way in that I don't have to argue with an opponent. Um, however, it also means it's, it's more difficult because it's easier for me to forget rules. Um, I've actually come up with a, a scenario from another set of rules that I've got Regimental Fire and Fury. And the scenario is from the second scenario book that they, that they publish. And the reason I went for this one in particular, if I can find it, which is um, McPherson's Ridge. So McPherson's Ridge is a two scenario game. So the first scenario is the morning scenario. And uh, if, you can, if you're used to um, Fire and Fury, Regimental Fire and Fury, they have a, a, a little of stickers that you put underneath the actual counters. I've come up with my own version but for uh, Pickett's Charge so I've converted the numbers um, basically each step point in here is worth about 80 men whereas each one on uh, in Pickett's Charge is 40 so it's a, a case of, of factoring down trying to keep them as close as I can to the actual scenario uh, the table, scale-wise, is the same as um, as presented as presented in uh, here, and um, I've tried to model it as I as I can based on this. Underneath here, there's old uh, video cassette tape boxes. The mat itself is a deep cut studio mat. Uh, the cat is another addition. Um, I've basically tried to get the cat to stay off the table and the cat's refused to stay off the table and in the end I've just given up and allowed the cat to stay on the table. So the cat's become a feature and if I needed to I would move him. Luckily the game's over as I say so we don't need to move him. Um, so we're going to try this. It uh, really is a case of um, I'm hoping to, to learn the game. I've played the game now twice solo and once at the club. We've enjoyed it each time we've played, I have, and uh, the club enjoyed it, um, but I just want to try to iron out the rules, make sure that what I'm doing is roughly correct. I'm not bothered if it's a minor little thing, but if I'm missing out a huge chunk, then it's going to be a, a problem. Well, this is the, the table layout, and what I was planning to do now is to show everybody you know, what the actual layout was, but as you can see, there is a giant obstruction that's appeared in one corner so we'll just have to go to rearrange this bit in case you think i'm being cruel he has been here the whole time that i've had my my tea oi yeah come on it's time to go ah, not those come on <laughs> come on mr puss <laughs> come on come on you're right in the middle of a confederate attack here a flanking attack yes i know but <laughs> Wait for bye. Here he is. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start by having a look around the battlefield. So on the Confederate left flank over here, we have the um, 55th North Carolina. You might notice that the uh, the little marker there has got a. Uh, handwritten note on it that's because I, I actually labeled that up wrong they've got a flank attack on the uh, union forces over here this is the start positions i've actually positioned the units on that um start uh, visible to the enemy so these aren't on blinds so there we have the uh is that the second mississippi and um, coming around here this is all part of davis's uh, brigade Around here we have the 42nd Mississippi. Yeah. The little counters next to them, that donates that they've not fired yet. Uh, 
we pass the main union line over here and then we come to the uh, the right flank of the confederate lines now the right flank most of the right flank anyway um, which is archers division are behind the woods so i've actually put those on blinds even though it wouldn't make much difference uh, because i'm playing solo they've got to cross that ravine with the river at the bottom of it which would take them quite a bit of time and then uh, we'll move around to the, the Union, Union flank, which is um, over here, which is uh, the Iron Brigade. Um, I don't think I've got the main leader on there. Anyway, um, I deployed on blinds as they're out of sight of the uh, Confederates on the other side of the ravine. And they're actually deployed with Reynolds and uh, that's Meredith's division. There, there is Meredith himself. Um, we've got the uh, Union Command sheet over here and I've actually got five staff officers. That's because the, the, the two for the two brigades and the three are because Reynolds is classified as a uh, young Napoleon. So he gets an extra three that he can uh, dip out anyone within 120 centimetres, so that covers most of the table. Then over here, we have the uh, 24th New York, who is Zouave unit, sorry, 84th New York, is Zouave unit, and in front of them, the 95th New York, who were deployed as skirmishers. Neither of those are fired, and the artillery, just to their right, uh, the first, that's uh, not the first, uh, the 147th New York are deployed uh, with a refused flank. And then we come around to these units over here. And we have the 56th Pennsylvania. And already deployed unformed because of the uh, scenario setup, we have the 26th, uh, yeah, the 26th New York, 76th New York, sorry. Um, The table is a Deep Cut Studios game map with, uh, with the hills created by putting video boxes underneath. And you can see here, this is the unfinished railway cut heading down the centre of the road, the forest. Uh, there should be a lot more fences on, but I haven't got any more. So I'm just going with what I've got.